Welcome or welcome back to my channel. Did you know that second grade involves more research and critical thinking? Grade two children are between the age of seven and eight years old. So is your child ready for second grade? Whether they homeschooled or they go to school, here are my 10 math expectations to know whether your child is ready for second grade. Just like every day, every day, every day. Math expectation number one, even and odd numbers. Is your child able to recognize what are even numbers and what are odd numbers? So the best way to show them this is that uh, even numbers are in pairs. So for instance, number 10, if you can show them uh, objects that you, they can group into pairs and there's nothing left over, then you can let them know that that is an even number, two, four, six, eight. If they are looking at objects and they pair them up and there's something left over, then they will know that that is an odd number, three, one, three, five, seven, nine, and so on. And when they get into two, two digit numbers, like uh, 29, they will know that that is an odd number because the last number ends in a nine. And if it is an even number like 38, they will look at the last number of eight and see that that is an even number. Math expectation number two, understanding graphs. Graphs are a great way to record data once the data has been collected. So you can have them uh, go around the house, collect data, um, how many of this objects, how many um, of this objects are in this color, um, how many objects are plastic or metal, or, um, you know, whatever the category you want to have them do, have them to collect the data and then record it as a graph. So we have different types of graphs. We have bar graphs, line graphs, uh, pie charts or pie graphs and pictographs so that they can uh, know that once they've collected the data, they can put it all together in one table or graph and then it's easier to look at and then see what their results are. Math expectation number three, tally marks. Tally marks may seem a bit old, but um, it's another way to record data and help them to keep track of scores if they're um, collecting uh, information about certain things. Um, the tally marks, if you're not familiar, are the uh, sticks, some people refer to them as sticks, and they are marks where you have four vertical sticks and then the fifth stick cross, crosses diagonally um, across the other four so that um, when they're recording their data and it's uh, five or more the first five is that specific tally mark and then um, another good reason for tally marks is that it will help them to learn their five times table or counting in groups of five and it's also an easier way to quickly um, add up the data once it's been recorded on the table. So um, tally marks is a, another good way for them to record data and uh, put it on a graph. It's usually associated with graphs or done at the same time as the graphs, but sometimes they are also done on their own. So you can have them uh, keep track of scores, record data, and uh, put it in the form of tally marks. Map expectation number four addition and subtraction fact families. Um, it's good to let your child know that addition and subtraction are in the same family. So if you are teaching them addition, teach them subtraction at the same time. Eight plus three is 11. 11 minus three is eight, right? So it's a good way to let them know that forwards if they're learning forwards addition and backwards it's subtraction and vice versa. So they will see that uh, they are in the same family. So if you had a, a different number, you know, you can mix the numbers around and let them know that um, if, they, if they're doing it vertically, you can also let them know if they're doing 10 plus three is 13 and then backwards or up, they can see that 13 minus three would be 10. Yes, yeah, so you can have it going across from left to right, or you can uh, show them the addition of subtraction going vertically from uh, north to south. And then they'll be able to see the difference between the two and how they join together and are a member of each other's family. 
and we're halfway there. Math expectation number five, rounding to the nearest 10. Now, in the grade before, in first grade, they would have learned counting in tens, 10, 20, 30, up to 100. But in second grade, they need to know how to round to the nearest 10. So for instance, if you have the number 12, is it closer to 10 or is it closer to 20? Right, so they would need to learn to look at the ones place and see that that ones place in the number 12 is a two. So it's below five. So if it's five or if it's four or below, then it's closer to the 10. And if it's five or above, then you give it a shove to the next 10, right? Then which would be 20. So um, if you look at the other example, 15, um, the ones place is a five. So five or above, you're going to give that whole number a shove. So the nearest 15 is closest to, the nearest 10 it's closest to is 20 and not 10, right? So it's a good way to go through the tens, go through the numbers in between and let them know that the numbers round, either they round to uh, 10, if it's 12, it rounds to 10. If it's 15, it rounds to 20. If it's 26, the six is in the ones place, so it's gonna round to 30. If it's 22, the two is less than five, so it's gonna round to 20. And you just let them know and so on. It can you know, go in groups of tens all the way up to 100. So if they're in the 90s and you're showing them rounding to the nearest 10 in the 90s, if it's 95 or more, it's gonna round to 100. If it's 94 or below, then it rounds to 90. Math expectation number six, understanding money. It's always, and coins and uh, bills as well, not just the coins. Um, it's, uh, it's early, but it's good to let them understand money as soon as possible. All right, so you have the coins, you have the quarters, the dimes, the nickels, the pennies. Let them know how much um, each coin uh, is valued at and then with the bills you probably only need a 20, a 10 and a 5 um, and then uh, working out change, understanding money, how to subtract money, how to add money. All right, so let them know all of that as well. Take it out, let them feel it, let them have a look at it and um, play some games, you know, with it. Um, have some objects with prices on it. Let them pretend, come and buy and let them work out how much to give back in change. Um, you can keep it low, you can keep it um, from under $5 or below if you're working out change. If you think that they have the capability to go higher and they can deal with a $10 or $20, then by all means do that. But it's very important to get them to know about money and what uh, the coins are valued at and how many of those coins make a dollar. How many nickels make a dollar? How many dimes make a dollar? How many pennies make a dollar? And so on, including quarters, right? So you're mixing all the money together and you're showing them what they're worth and how to use them. Math expectation number seven, writing numbers in word form. Very important that uh, your child needs to know how to write the numbers in words. Um, the number one, for example, uh, some second graders may think it begins with a W because of the sound it makes. That's why it's important to have them learn how to actually write the numbers in word form. Even the number two has a W in the middle. Um, you want them to be able to recognize those spellings and be able to write them themselves. Usually numbers are written from one to nine and then from 10 onwards, they use numerically. But um, I would say, let your child learn how to spell the numbers um, from all the way up to 20 and beyond, I would say maybe up to 25, 28, 30, um, let them know how to spell them. Um, so like I said, you can, you can actually have objects and have it written um, after they've counted the object and they know how many is there, have them write the number in words so that they can practice how to spell the numbers and to visually recognize what the numbers look like. Because even if they're reading, I know this is a math video, but even if they're reading and they come across numbers that are written in words, you want them to be able to recognize and know that it's actually a um, numerical word that's uh, written in words. So that's, it's gonna be very helpful for them in the long run. 
Math expectation number eight, measuring length. Children love to do this. They love to use rulers, yardsticks, meter sticks, and uh, go around the house and measuring things and even themselves, you know, children love to see how much they've grown within a month or weeks or whatever and uh, measuring themselves. I would say uh, centimeters, uh, inches, um, feet even. Uh, just to see um, not only how much they've grown, but measuring things around the house, like I previously said. How high is this chair? How high is this table? How wide is uh, mummy's printer? Um, what's the dimensions of mummy's cell phone, the iPad, the the Mac? You get you get the the the, the gist. Yeah. So children love measuring stuff. Have them going around and using different measuring tools to see how wide something is, how long something is, and let them um, connect the words long with length and the word wide with width and, um, you know, how tall something is is, a is the height. So you want to make it specific as well as fun. Math expectation number nine, adding and subtracting with regrouping. So we're no longer teaching um, our children adding and subtracting and we're not borrowing from the tens place. So we need to let them know that if there's uh, a number and they're looking at the ones place and you cannot subtract and you're looking at five, take away eight, that they have to know that they cannot switch. They have to go to the tens place and they have to borrow and bring it back over to the ones place. And then you're helping the ones place out so that the ones place can actually be calculated. So that is um, borrowing is uh, a good thing to let them know that, well, with subtraction, they cannot switch the numbers. Very, very important. And then with addition, obviously, um, they're going to be adding the ones place and regrouping or carrying it over into the tens. So um, that will give them a, a, a good insight um, into how to add, how to subtract and regroup. Math expectation number 10, word problems. So with word problems, um, they are special words that uh, indicates to your child whether to add or whether to subtract. And if you are um, teaching them a little bit of multiplication, obviously you know your child's ability. If you are bringing uh, multiplication into the fold, then you're showing them word problems with words that will let them know that they're multiplying. So you have um, words like what's left in your word problem, then you they'll know that they're subtracting. If there's words like um, how many altogether or the word sum, S-U-M, then they will know that they're adding. So you want to be able to show them these specific words that indicates to them that they are adding or they're subtracting. Um, but with the addition and the subtraction, you want to find a lovely group of words that can show them that they are in fact um, you know, taking away, subtract is minus, is take away. Um, and like I said, how many is left included in the word problem. Um, and you can, you know, write some word problems out yourself and even go through it with them. If I had this amount um, with toys or objects and I took away this, then how many is left? Um, if you had this amount and then I gave you, right, more, um, then how many do you have now? Then they'll know that uh, they are to add. You can even have um, uh, word problems like so-and-so went to the store and they spent a certain amount. That would also go into the category of adding and subtracting money when you're going through the coins and the bills with them. So if someone's spending the money, then does that mean you're keeping the money or does that mean you're giving away the money? So does that come under add or subtract? So you're going through it with them and letting them know what words mean what operation. So those are my 10 math expectations to know if your child is ready for second grade. If you would like to add on more, please do so uh, in the comment section below. If I missed anything and you remember anything that I missed, please let me know. Like, comment and subscribe with that notification bell so you know every time I upload, which is every Wednesday. And I will see you next time in another math video. Thank you for watching. Class dismissed. Every day.